horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Forceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Lone Silver, let's go, Rico. I'll Silver. The small wagon train had entered the town of Mayville, and the leader of the wagons, Ned Baker, went into the cafe to get some information. He approached the table where Sheriff Platt was having lunch. Howdy, Sheriff. I reckon you're the proper army to give me a bit of information. I just brought that wagon train through from St. Louis. Well, what else you want to know, mister? I'd be thankful if you'll tell me how to get to Cedar Valley. I'm Ned Baker. Got a brother, Dave, who brought some homesteaders out here a couple of years ago. Me and the folks with me want to settle in the valley where Dave and the others are. More homesteaders, eh? That's right. Yeah, I'll tell you how to get to Cedar Valley. But you'd do better to go farther into the southwest and settle. Well, yeah. thanks for the advice, Sheriff. But Dave wrote me about how fine it is around here. I reckon we'll settle in that valley where him and the others are. I see. Well, frankly, Baker, I've had a hard job keeping peace around this territory. Since your brother and these other homesteaders came here. Why, well, what do you mean? The ranchers hereabouts don't take to homesteading. They claim it spoils the land for cattle raising. <laughs> well, now I reckon the West is big enough for all those who want to come out here. Back east in the papers, the government keeps urging folks to head west. And in these letters, my brother Dave said that he and the others are doing right well. And that there's still land to spare in Cedar Valley. Yeah. Seems like he overlooked mentioning they've been up against trouble from time to time. Oh, no, no. Dave did write about that. But he said the ranchers had sort of left them alone in the past few months. No, he's right about that. Now, but... if you'll tell me how to get to Cedar Valley, I... I'll take the south trail to end the town for about three miles. Then you come to a branch trail that leads right to Cedar Valley. Thanks, Sheriff. We'll head that way right now. I reckon I'll be seeing you around town from time to time. Go on. Later that afternoon, Gil Randall, the owner of the Circle R spread, stood near the corral talking to his foreman, Mark. Gil Randall was a smooth type of man who had gained his holdings by methods that were shady, and who liked the power and influence he held over the other ranchers in the territory surrounding Mayville. Gil was saying to his foreman, It rankles me, Mark, that in spite of the trouble we've caused those homesteaders in Cedar Valley, they gained a good foothold there and seemed determined to stay. Yeah. It seems to me, Gil, we didn't cause him enough trouble. It isn't like you to hold back when you have something to gain. Well, the law is on their side, for one thing. That valley land is near my spread. It would be a valuable addition. Yeah. But if we pulled something really big and it was proved we did it, 
He'd wind up behind bars. You have a way of getting the other ranchers to side with you. Sure. Yeah. I told him if we could run those homesteaders out, it would discourage others from coming in. What's more, it might encourage other ranchers in the West to rise against all homesteaders. <laughs> of course, none of the ranchers here, but it's sort of the fact that if we do drive out the people in Cedar Valley, you'll really be the one to profit by it, Jim. Well, what if I am? we got to keep the West for the cattlemen. There's no place out here for those no-good small-time farmers. They cut up and fence in the land and ruin the ranges for grazing. <laughs> by Sunday, you're getting to believe you're doing the West a big service, <laughs> Yeah. He comes one of the cowpokes back in town. He's riding hard like he's bringing news of some sort. Oh, 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 oh. Well, let's see. What's the big hurry? I heard something at the cafe that might interest you, boss. Well, then start talking. Tom Bray heading a small wagon train. Come into the cafe. He's talking to the sheriff. Asked the way to see the valley. You mean they intend to homestead there? Yeah. Tom Bray's the brother of Dave Baker. Dave got him to come out and bring the others with him. Said they're going to homestead there with Dave and those who are already living there. Boy, thunder, that's the last straw. The sheriff tried to warn them to go farther west. Told them there might be trouble. There'll be trouble, all right. Even if they did go farther west, I don't like it. They ought to be turned back. Them and any others who come through this territory. Yeah, easy to talk about doing that, boss. Getting them to go all the way back, something else. Well, if they ran into something to discourage them, they'd be glad to go back where they came from. Now, are you going to make trouble for them before they start getting settled, you? If Dave Baker sent for them, maybe him and the others got farms laid out and cabins already built and waiting there in the valley for them. Mark, I want you and Rusty to get word to the other ranchers to meet here tomorrow night. Tell them I said it's very important. Then we'll see about those homesteaders. <laughs> The following night, about ten ranchers were gathered in the main room of the Circle R Ranch House. Gil Randall stood behind a table and rapped for silence. All right, listen to what I have to say, everybody. All of you know how I feel about the homesteaders in Cedar Valley. Even though we've caused them some trouble, like ripping down their fences at night and driving stray cattle over their crops, we've been fairly patient about the whole thing. Now, yesterday, Dave Baker's brother from back east brought more homesteaders here. They're settling over in Cedar Valley with the rest. I say it's about time for us to show all of them they're not wanted in the West. Now, hold on, Randall. Just what have we got to gain by moving against those homesteaders in the valley? Hey, Green, every time we have a meeting for the good of us ranchers, you start objecting. I'm for anything that's for the good of the ranchers, and you know it. Then why are you disrupting this meeting now with a local question like that? Because I still don't see how they're interfering with us. If we do run them out, you take over Cedar Valley, since it's bordering on your spread. That's not true. This affects all of us. I'm a cattleman. I have big holdings here in the West. I say there's no place for those land-grabbing homesteaders out here. They keep on coming and ruining us. Sure they will. Nonsense. The West is big enough for all who might want to come out here. There's miles and miles of range land that's never even been used. We need settlers out here. All we can get. If we ever hope to make something out of the West. Now, wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Wait. If Hank Green is going to be satisfied with that two-bit ranch he owns, that's his business. But the rest of us have the right to grow. Spread out our holdings. And I say it's up to us to keep the West open for raising cattle. Right. Homesteaders are ruined the West. Yeah, yeah, I'm not afraid. But I am thinking of other people's rights, which is more than Gil Randall is doing. I'm just one hombre against the ten of you. So I can't hope to keep you from doing what you might plan to do. But by thunder, I don't have to go along with you. You better get out of here then, Green. Let me warn you. You go spouting off your mouth to the sheriff or to Dave Baker. I won't be responsible for what might happen. I'll leave right now. And what's more, Randall, I don't give a hang about any of your threats. What I do and say is my own business. Now I'm getting out of here. Well, boys, I'll tell you. Rusty. Let us see that he does leave. Find a way to make sure he doesn't do any talking. Now get going. All right, boss. See you later. Man, the time has come to act. Now listen to me, and I'll tell you how we're going to get rid of those homesteaders once and for all. Later that night, the Lone Ranger and Toto, who had pitched camp in the hills outside Mayville, were sitting near the campfire which had burned to a mass of glowing embers. The Lone Ranger looked up at the moon, then spoke. 
The full moon makes it bright enough to see for some distance, Tonto. Ah, moon plenty bright, Kimasabi. One more day of travel should get us to the mission. Yeah, long time since we see Padre. Tonto, <laughs> there was a shot. Ah, it seemed to come from up trail. Hurry, right, let's saddle the horses. We'll go up the trail and investigate. Ah. Ranger and Toto had ridden a short way up the trail when Toto pointed ahead and spoke. Look, Kimakari, horse coming along the trail. Oh, 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 oh. Right is crouched over the pommel of the saddle, Toto. Ah, looked like him maybe fall. Yes, let's go meet him. Come on, Toto. Come on, Toto. patient opened his eyes, then tried to rise as he spoke weakly. Uh, the masked armor. You, you were the one who... Well, take it easy. Don't try to rise now. Uh, uh, I thought maybe they, they were making sure I wouldn't talk. But now, now that I see you're an outlaw, I guess I'm wrong in thinking... No, we're not outlaws, believe me. We were here in camp and we heard a shot. We met you coming along the trail, crouched over in the saddle. We bandaged your wound and brought you here. Isn't that right? The bandage. You put that on me? Yes. You'll be all right after a few days. If, if you shot me, you wouldn't try to, to save me. That means it must have been someone Randall said. Randall? Yes, Gil Randall. He owns the, the Circle R spread. Why should he want to have you killed? Randall is a troublemaker. Oh? He's turned a lot of the ranches against the homesteaders in Cedar Valley. I see. More settlers came there the day before yesterday. Randall called a meeting tonight at his place. I went, but I objected to his plan to move against the homesteaders. You're one of the ranchers? That's right. Randall warned me to keep my mouth shut. I didn't stay to hear what they planned to do. There are about nine ranchers who follow him like sheep. If Randall would resort to murder, he must be planning something drastic against those people in the valley. I'm sure of that. He stands to gain, but he makes the others think it's for the good of the West. The West needs the homesteaders. And if men like Randall continue to make trouble, it means many of the small farmers will leave. Not only that, but they'll spread the word. We'll keep others from coming out to help settle the West. That's right, mister. That's the way I feel about it. Of course, if you aren't sure Randall was behind the attempt to kill you, uh, mister... Uh, Green. Hank Green of the Bar G Ranch. Hank, are you sure Randall can persuade the others to move against those homesteaders? Yes. Yes, he sure can. He got them to cut fences and ruin crops during the past year. But this time, I know he's planning something big. They ought to be warned... But, of course, I don't know what Randall plans to do or when he'll do it. Mm, that's not good. Toto, it's up to us to find out what's being planned and to do what we can to prevent it. Men like Randall are a danger to the West. We'll do all we can to see that he's stopped. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. Early the following morning, the Lone Ranger and Tonto left Hank in camp and rode up the trail, backtracking on the hoof marks made by Hank's horse. They found marks on the trail indicating that the horse had broken his pace and veered to one side. They decided this was the spot where Hank had been shot. So they searched behind the boulders and bushes in an effort to find the trail of the gunman. Here. Here, Kim Atabi. Yes. You see hoof marks, hoof prints, behind large boulders. Uh, this is where the killer waited in ambush for Hank Green. Not right. To pick up his trail now and we'll see where it leads. All right, let's go. The Lone Ranger and Tonto followed the trail left by Rusty to the Circle R spread. They drew rain in a hollow a short distance from the ranch house. The man who shot at Hank came here to the Circle R, Tonto. Ah. Hank say this ranch owned by Randall. Yes, I know. Hank was right in thinking Randall sent someone to kill him. That means Randall and his men are planning something big to drive out the homesteaders. Yeah. And what we do? How we find out? I... I don't know. We go back to camp and try to think of something. All right, let's go. One soon, we'll get him up and out. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode away from the hollow near the Circle R, the masked man changed his mind about going directly to the camp, saying, Uh-oh, before we go to camp, we decided to head for the homesteaders' valley. They should be warned. That's a good idea. We look the situation over out there, and while I wait nearby, you can go to one of the houses and tell them what we've learned. Uh, All right, let's hurry. Come on, Tilly. In the valley, Ned Baker was at the home of his brother, Dave. The two men were having coffee as they talked, while Dave's wife, Selena, hovered nearby ready to refill their cups. Ned was speaking. Sure was nice of you, Dave, to get a place all ready for me like you did. The others are mighty grateful, too, for the places all of you fixed up for them. As soon as you wrote that you were going to come out here, I passed the word around and everybody chipped in to help. More coffee, Ned? Oh, no, thanks, Selena. Sit down and join us. All right. Oh, my, it's sure nice to have more folks here in Cedar Valley. So we'll have quite a settlement. We'll be all right if we're let alone, Selena. Why shouldn't we be, Dave? I admit the few ranchers who've been against us did cause us some trouble, but lately we've had little to worry about. Yes, we haven't had much to worry about, but, you know, we never could place the blame for the things that did happen, like cut fences and ruined crops and such. Those things always happened at night, but I've often suspected Gil Randall was behind all of it. Well, who's he? Randall is a big ranch owner, and he hates homesteaders. Many of the other ranchers are influenced by what he says. But what about the law? As homesteaders, we have rights, don't we? Oh, sure we have, but sometimes out here, Ned, men like Randall figure that might makes right. Yeah. They manage to hoodwink the law. Hey, I didn't wait tonight. Well, what's up, friend? I saw a man at Tom Brady and Indian. Acting like they're snooping in the valley. I followed them up the east side. Then they come back along the west side. So I hightailed it here to tell you. I made sure they didn't see me, Dave. They're over by Ned's new cabin right now. I'll bet Randall hired them to cause trouble. What are we going to do, Dave? Dave, please be careful. Get a couple of more men, Fred, and meet us out in front. We'll go to Ned's place and see if we can surprise those two armies. All right. Uh, hurry, we'll be waiting. Meantime, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had observed the homes in the valley. When they came to the new cabin which had been built for Ned Baker, they pulled rain in a grove of trees nearby. I'll wait here, Tonto. You go to that cabin and warn whoever answers the door that the cattlemen are planning trouble. And to pass the word around. Uh, let me do that. Now, uh, don't wait to answer questions. But be sure to stress the fact that there's real danger. Uh, let me go now. May not be gone long. Get him up, scout. Tonto left the grove of trees and headed for the cabin. While he was gone, the lone ranger busied himself tightening the cinch on Silver's saddle. Easy, huh? Suddenly, the great stallion whinnied a warning. The lone ranger turned around at the same time reaching for his gun. A voice spoke from the edge of the grove. Please, mister. What? We got you covered. I kind of thought we'd find them here in this grove, Dave. Yeah, but you said there were two. Maybe the Indian went to report and left this masked army to spy on. Yeah, it must be it. Sure. We don't like people snooping around our homes, mister. Especially masked owl hoots like you. I'm not an outlaw. 
We came here to give you homesteaders a warning. Well, you came to give us a warning, huh? A warning to get out of the valley or be driven out. Is that it? No. You'll wait until I explain. Well, you don't but... listen to outlaws. Why don't you keep him covered? I'll take his guns and grab off his man. The Lone Ranger, standing beside Silver with his hands raised, realized he was in immediate danger. Just as he was about to act, in spite of the guns pointed at him, he heard Tonto's voice from behind the men. You read hey, what's it? Then saw the Indian standing a short distance away with drawn guns. Drop guns. Tonto. Someone's got the drop on us from behind. You better do as he says or take the consequences. Yeah, it must be the Indian. He came back. All right, there's my gun. Yeah, I'm yeah. Now, Tonto, we'll move in and gather up their guns. Uh, me do that. In a way, I'm glad, mister, but... Now that you have the upper hand... We'll get him yet. Just wait and see. No, I don't think so. We have guns. Come on, Bobby. Toss him into the bushes, fellow. Uh, uh, now that you're unarmed, we'll be on our way. The ranchers are planning to move against you here in the valley. I don't know how or when. Take the warning for what it's worth. Uh, what do you uh, do? Uh, uh, stand on Fort uh, Cabin. Uh, see men ride to grove sure. a tree. We leave Scout in no, Edge of Grove. No. You came just in time, Tonto. All right, call Scout. I'm Scout. Now, well, let's get going. Easy, Easy, Easy Scout. Easy, Scout. One, two, three. I'm Scout. After the masked man and the Indian left, Dave Baker sent one of the homesteaders to town to tell the sheriff what had happened and to tell about the warning the masked man had given. Meantime, the Lone Ranger and Tonto returned to their camp. They found Hank Green feeling much better and gave an account of their meeting with the five homesteaders. Hank was saying... I think I can ride all right. The homesteaders know how I feel. Why not let me ride to the valley this afternoon and tell them to be on guard? I can tell them about you and Tonto, too, so they'll be friendly if you come there to give warning and help them. All right, Hank. That's a good idea. I'm sure nothing will happen before dark. Now, uh, take your time riding to the valley, and Tonto will go along to see that you get there safely. Uh, me do that. Then we come back and watch with Lone Ranger. Tonto left with Hank Green later that afternoon. About dusk, he returned to the camp, and after supper, he and the Lone Ranger rode to a hiding place along the branch trail to the valley. They dismounted in an arroyo near the trail and waited patiently. Two hours had passed when finally Toto, who was peering over the edge of the arroyo down the trail, gave voice to a warning. Hey, Masabi. Yes? Moon bright enough to see far along trail. It looks like many horses come. All right, we'll keep out of sight until they pass. You think it's Randall and Ranchers? Yes. Yeah. After they pass, we'll take the shortcut and get to the valley first. Yes. Well, the wind is blowing east to west. Well, the valley is clean over the east slope. That's Randall and his crowd, all right. We'll ride back along the arroyo a short way and get to the shortcut, hard. Easy, steady, big boat. Easy, scout, easy. Most of them are going to the The masked man and the Indian rode at a gallop into the valley. Suddenly, their way was blocked by several horsemen who came from hiding and faced them on the trail. Oh, no, no, no. Hank told us about that. Yeah. Baker, we've come to war and help you. About ten of the ranchers, probably led by Randall, are on their way to burn you out. Now, uh, if you'll listen, I think I can tell you how to catch them in the act and avoid gunplay. All right, mister, after what Hank told us, we will listen. The sheriff and his deputy are waiting at my place. Good. I'll tell you my plan. And you can send for the sheriff and other homesteaders. Here's what we'll do to catch them red-handed. Randall and his followers swung eastward when they reached the entrance to the valley. They followed a narrow trail along the east slope. Yeah, there's no one in sight. Lights in their cabins yeah. show they don't expect trouble. Yeah, it'll take them a while to realize what's going on after we spread out and set fire to the dry brush and tall grass. <laughs> yeah, we'll follow along behind the fire and throw lead at anyone. Who, 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 All right, now each one of you has an oil-soaked torch in your saddlebag. Get it out. And we'll spread out, light them up, and set things going. All right. Yep. Here's mine. I'll give you time to spread along the line. And when you see me light my torch, you do the same. All right. All right. I reckon if Hank Green hadn't talked out a turn at the meeting and it had come along, you'd start kicking about this, huh, boss? Since that accident he had, he won't do any more yapping. Now, shut up, Rusty, and get going with the rest. Hey, Charlie, hey, hey. cover from all sides. Hey, what's this? Hey, look, men coming out of the tall grass like prairie dogs. Yeah, and others on horses back in them trees. Hey. He'll have the sheriff's voice. 
Get back down and talk. I'll use your guns, man. Yeah. Oh, you old... Oh. forced a bit of gunplay by trying to shoot their way out. But they soon gave up, and the sheriff with the homesteaders forced them to dismount and disarm. The Lone Ranger and Tonto sat in their saddles watching as the sheriff and his deputies prepared to take over. Sheriff, I demand the arrest for that mask on you shot me in the arm. You have no proof of wrongdoing. We came here to talk the situation over with the homesteaders. Stop lying, Randall. We know you plan to move against us. And here's someone who can prove it. That's right. They did plan it at Gil Randall's ranch. Thank green. Holy mackerel, I thought... I heard you admit a while ago you caused Hank to have an accident. I didn't admit any such thing. Anyway, Gil told me... you. I'm taking all of you to jail for the time being. I'm sure some of you were influenced by Randall. Didn't understand what you were up to. Sheriff, cattlemen must realize the West doesn't belong to them alone. The West is big enough for everyone who wants to come here. Men like Randall are a menace to the growth of the West. And to the success of its people. You and the others can manage now, I'm sure. Come, Tonto. Adios. Adios. Gil Randall, you and Rusty will be charged with attempted murder against Hank Green. Other charges against you and these followers of yours will be made later. Now get your horses, Pronto. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Hurry. Why, some of that masked man sure saves the day for us homesteaders. Hey, Hank, he's a friend of yours. Yes, sir. Just who is he, anyway? Well, I reckon the sheriff has already guessed who he is. The Indian Tonto told me. You see, he's the Lone Ranger. Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone